Hi everyone, Roy Neary from Data Spinners, Power Addicts and TDG. Today I'm going to do a really cool demonstration of how you can put Power BI inside Power Apps. Um, and, but I'm going to show you some tricks to make it really, really fly. Um, so I think without any further ado, we're just going to move straight into uh, maybe a demo of, of the sort of things that we're going to look at today. So here we are in Power Apps at the moment. What we can see is that we've actually got a Power BI report that is sitting inside Power Apps and it's actually refreshing every 10, 10 seconds. So if you look at the timer down below, you can see that every 10 seconds it, it goes around. Uh, this was part of a demonstration that I did and uh, and I just want to demonstrate that it actually works. So uh, if we move over to the Snap service, so it's just a forms, uh, uh, in fact, that's not it. It's uh, There's a survey that I put together and eventually I'll actually find it. In fact, if I just go to view survey, that'll take me where, where I need to get to. Yeah. Man, it's on another page. Yeah, I separated it out to see if I could actually get the both of them on the same page. And um, so I've got a survey here. It's the world's simplest survey. And all it does, it's a it's a Microsoft form survey. Um, and you just answer two, <laughs> answer one question. Do you agree with the statement? So I would say, do you think you're a citizen developer? And so let's say I said, yeah, and I'll put no on this occasion. Uh, and I could click submit. Uh, that means it's submitted uh, and what it does at this point is it uh, it then uses the flow to connect to SQL Server and this is a, a report that's done under direct query so what we should see is on the next iteration you can see that the report has updated. So what I'll do now is I'll show you um, I'll also show you another version of this uh, which is also interesting, uh, and that's where you can actually look at multiple reports. So this is one where I've got it multi-power BI, uh, and what this does is it actually uh, it jumps between three different reports, and I'll show you how uh, how that works as well. So these are two, three completely different reports. This is, you know, some presentation queries and so on. And what we'll see is that, that in a moment it'll move on to the third report, which is in a completely different workspace and so on. Um, obviously you wouldn't have a, you wouldn't actually iterate through it on a uh, every 10 seconds, but you can actually pause the iteration so you can then, um, you can then just click on things and actually iterate through the, uh, you can actually use it as a real Power BI report. So what I'm going to do now is I'm now going to look under the hood of how this has actually been done. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to come out here and move into edit mode and click OK on that. And I think that what I'll do is I'm just going to create a new screen um, and we're just going to go straight from blank. I always think it's important to just go straight from blank so that we can see it all working. So the normal way of um, of adding a Power BI report, in fact, it's a Power BI dashboard, is to go to the charts, because it's moved from, it used to be under input, I think. You go to Power BI tile, and then you go click on the workspace, so you click on something like finance, uh, then click on the dashboard. Um, I'm gonna click on this, uh, I'm gonna click on this I'll click on this one here. I'm not sure what's going to be in there. Um, and then I'm going to click on this uh, tile that's within the dashboard. So um, I guess to put that into perspective, uh, what are we really looking at? So I'm going to jump into Power BI now. Let's hope that uh, jumps me out. This was another report that I was doing. Um, and so if I move into uh, my, I need to be into my um, my finance workspace, which is here. Um, and you can actually see the dashboards and you can see this is my test dashboard and you can actually see that this is um, there are two um, there are two different um, uh, dashboard tiles and I happen to choose this particular tile here and that's why it shows up and then if we click on the actual tile itself it'll actually move us all the way through to one of the most boring reports uh, in the world so um, so that's 
So that's that's um, that item there. Um, so moving back onto the uh, the power app itself, which is this one here. This is the uh, this is the normal way of getting to Power BI dashboard tiles. But in actual fact, you can you can navigate as we saw earlier to a Power BI report. Now, I'm not a big fan of dashboard tiles, but I am a big fan of Power BI reports. So let's see how you do that. Now, the first thing I want to do, I'm going to do it incorrectly, which is what actually happened when I did it on my first take. And um, so I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to go to charts, then Power BI tile. And this is how you might choose to do it. So what you might choose to do is you might choose to go down to the, uh, hold on, um, it's the tile URL. So at the moment it's nothing. And I'll just demonstrate to you that on this thing here, the tile URL is literally a URL. So that whole process of getting to a, uh, a dashboard or, you know, it just created a URL. Uh, and so, um, and so the natural thing to then think is, well, crikey, well, it can't be that hard. I'm just going to go to, I'm just going to find a report. Um, and if I just go to one of my workspaces, I'll go to something like education uh, and I'll go to report and jump into this one here, say. And then the natural thing uh, would be to just grab this URL here, copy it, go on to uh, the page and where it says tile URL, just paste it in there and it won't work. Okay. Uh, okay. So it didn't work. I knew it was going to work. It wasn't going to work actually, as it happened last night when I was, um, was doing it, I'd forgotten actually how to do it. So this is a good test. So the way to do it is actually to go on to the, um, go on to the report itself. You hit the three dots, you click embed, and then you have to click on website or portal. And when you click on that, you'll get uh, an embed code. And so if I now copy this, um, I can then go back onto my presentations and I can uh, paste that in to there. I don't think it'll work first time. Actually, maybe it won't. We'll, we'll just see how it works. Um, and here it comes. So that is the beating heart of how I am going to get this thing to uh, to present different reports to to my users. Um, what I should probably do is actually get the same uh, go onto a different tenant and and actually just see whether or not um, whether or not that's actually going to be a disaster if I'm uh, read, logged in as uh, a different um, a different user. Let's just see if there's anything uh, that I can get to that uh, where we can actually experiment with that. So let's see if I can get into that. And there's no way I'm going to remember this password. Nope. So never mind. So I will, um, I will investigate that uh, separately. Um, so, I'll, um, and what I'll do is I will, I'll put some text underneath to say whether or not it works or not. So, uh, okay. So that's interesting. So we've got, um, we've got it um, showing one report now, which is great. Uh, but how is it we get it to refresh the report? And actually, the process of getting it to refresh the report is actually, well, it's it's kind of simple. It's kind of simplistic, at least. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm now going to put a timer on there. Now, bear in mind, this particular report isn't on direct query. So it's not really that interesting um, to, to refresh it because there actually isn't going to be any change. But the process is that we can go to... Um, so what I will, I'll pick up a different report in order to, to demonstrate this. And um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to grab a, yeah. So I'm going to go and create a, uh, I'm going to, I need a timer. So, uh, I've got my timer, uh, and I'll make it a bit bigger and let's just make it, let's say eight seconds long. It's not very, long but you know i just want to keep this nice and uh nice and simple and reasonably quick for you uh so it's got a duration of eight thousand eight seconds uh and then what we want it to do is to change a variable at the end of each eight seconds 
And so all we need to do is we do um, on timer end. Um, I'm going to put set oh, on timer end set GV um, GV uh, demo PBI to be uh, and what it'll actually do is we're going to set it to be nothing. That's the first thing it's going to do because that's effectively a, like a reset. Um, and then once it's done that, um, I'm going to copy that and do a semicolon and then do what I really want it to be. Now, what I really want it to be, I'm just going to jump onto and borrow the um, borrow the uh, borrow the actual um, URL from here, and that's actually all that's going on here. So I'm going to borrow this here. Um, and not quite sure why there's a reset timer, but we'll see. Um, so I'm going to go back onto my, oh, it's right down at the bottom, screen two, go on to there and say so set uh, the demo PBI to be this. And there's two quotes in there, so that should be okay. And then what I'm going to do is on the actual tile itself, um, the tile URL, uh, I'm going to replace this with GV demo PBI. Now, initially that won't do anything because um, because actually, um, nope, go away. And um, initially it won't do anything because we need to get to the end of the eight seconds. Now, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to do a repeat on this. So this should this means that the timer will actually just keep going and going and going. That means every eight seconds, in theory, we will get a refreshed version of the report. So let's see if that actually works. We're going to have a pregnant pause to begin with where we um, wait to see if it's actually going to do something. In fact, I need to pop the auto start onto here. So looking on there um, where it says auto start, um, we'll need to make sure that actually starts, otherwise it'll just do nothing. So I'm going to click auto start and you can see um, that our uh, you can see here that our timer has started and in a second we should find that actually the Power BI report will actually run. And we'll actually see that at the end of the next eight seconds it'll run again and that's fine. Uh, and so the final part of the process is to actually, I'm just looking to see if I actually see my um, my uh, ser my survey and I will, I will find it. Um, where are you? There you are. So what that means is I can now uh, go onto this here, submit another response. Do you agree with the statement? Uh, yes. And then what we find is, I think I actually submitted it. I was very, very quick there. Um, let's just see if that actually works. Hold on. Eight seconds. Yeah. So there we are. We've got my, um, we've got the three responses. So that's good. That's what we wanted, um, and and it works very well with direct query and so on. Um, but the other thing that occurred to me is that wouldn't it be cool if we could actually iterate between completely different reports? So one, we've got a demonstration of how you could actually have the most up-to-date version of a report, which is fine. And now I'm going to demonstrate to you how it is we get uh, three different reports here. And it's really just based on the same idea. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go on to the, uh, this is just going to be showing you how I, I've done it. Uh, so I'm going to go to this landing screen, go on to here and then onto the multi power BI. Uh, and it's going to fire up a report, which is great. Um, but what I'm going to do is just show you that that um, essentially what we have are three buttons, really simple buttons. And all these buttons do is say set GV Power BI required is equal to something. Uh, and that something is our embed, um, our embed uh, text that we um, found earlier on. And that's all each of the buttons does. Now, um, this one's, one's called Button Gartner, one's called Button Survey, and one's called Button TVCC. And that's relevant because when we look at the timer itself, we go on to the um, on timer end um, and we see the switch statement that we've got here. And all the switch statement does is it oscillates between the different buttons. So if 
it does two things. It sets um, it, it it sets the latest um, PBI selected. There's probably better. There are better ways of doing this, and 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 I've thought of different ways of doing this. But just this was just a kind of cheap and nasty way of doing something quite neat. So all it does is um, jumps between the different reports that uh, we want to visualize. So if it's Gartner then it moves on to survey. If it's survey, it moves on to TVCC. And if it's TVCC, it moves on to Gartner. But each time it does it, it actually clicks the button by using the select statement. So we actually we can actually see this in, in action. So if I just sort of demonstrate, I'm going to pause this. And if I actually click on survey results, what it actually does, it just clicks the button. So all we've got happening is at the end of each timer is click a button. End of each timer, click a button, and um, and but it's a different button each time. So if I actually let this thing run for itself, um, then what we should see is that we should see this um, oscillating around. We might find there's a little problem on the very very first one, so it may just actually carry on. But yeah, because I think that in its head, um, it hadn't done all of the the updates. But what we should find is, have I killed it? Good, good. It's it's now kind of going round its little cycle. So now we've moved on to the TVCC results, and at the end of the next ten seconds, we'll move on to the Gartner survey. And I so I, and these things can be in completely different workspaces. This is uh, um, and it's really uh, you will obviously need to make sure the Power BI reports were shared with your users and so on. But I think this is really neat. You know, you could even you know you can interact with these things you know you can actually properly you know, interact with them and and if they do have filters and so on then you can interact with those filters and um, uh, one way in which I've, this one doesn't well it I haven't put any filters on there but you know it's quite you know it's quite you know I, I think it's quite compelling really that that you can actually uh, you can interact with it to this degree. I'm going to click this clear filters button to see if it actually works, and it does work. Uh, so this is um, this is just a Power BI um, button linked to a bookmark and so on. So um, so we've been through uh, quite an interesting take on integrating Power BI with uh, within Power Apps, and I think this is quite a compelling way in which to use the technology so it'll be really interested if people find it interesting please like it please make sure you subscribe down below um because that's great uh it's quite you know it's one of those things it's this is your way of giving back to me um and uh, if you've got any other observations and so on if there are any videos that you want me to put together uh, i'd be very interested it's really interesting to know the sort of problems that people are having and uh, and seeing if we can find solutions together uh, to solve them so uh, great to see you again and or not as the case may be and uh, and uh, we will we'll catch up in another tutorial sometime soon.